So I'm here today with Land Rover doing an extremely unique bush rugby experience that potentially has never been done before in an environment that I had no idea or concept I would ever be a privy to. Um, lions, cheetahs, leopards, elephant, but something I'm probably the most scared of given that there's a river literally like 20 meters are hippos. Yeah, an experience that you know brings rugby properly to the grassroots of it and hopefully making an experience as unique for them as it has been for us. So New Zealand's performance uh, bouncing back from the first Bledisloe Cup loss in Perth, uh, they, they need to put in a good performance and knowing that they were under pressure, knowing that the Bledisloe Cup was on the line, and for big games usually you go back to your bread and butter, what you know, but Steve Hansen didn't and they put in a, a performance that you'd expect. So looking at Eddie Jones, I've been asked the question a number of times over the last 18 months about his influence in 2007 and what he brought to that Springbok side that went on to win the Rugby World Cup. We really got the fun-loving Eddie that didn't have to deal with the media and we got an incredibly astute rugby brain really being able to talk rugby, allow us to live and breathe rugby and bring small intricate detailed changes to our game that allowed us to progress and, and go on and win the competition in 2007. So Wales ranked number one team in the world. They deserve that accolade simply because they put a, a string of games together, 14 on the bounce. They've been the most consistent side in, in, in world rugby in the last couple of years. Uh, they are well coached uh, under Warren Gatlin that uh, given the right um, opportunities and, and getting to a final uh, are capable of winning it and, and deservedly so. So Pio Janki has <laughs> unfortunately as what it looks like, you know, not only not played rugby over the last couple of weeks and months, but potentially is now in a position to, you know, to go out and, and miss the Rugby World Cup 2019, which I think for him personally is, is really unfortunate and disappointing, given that he went on to become the most promising player in world rugby in, in 2018, and there was just so much expectation of him. You know, unfortunately, injury has cur curtailed his progress. Is he easily replaced? You know, you look at the likes of Cheslin Kobe, Makazoli Mpimpi, uh, Sabu Nkosi, who had an absolutely brainstormer game this past weekend. And yeah, I think we've got people in that position to, to make it you know, possible. So will his loss be felt? I think so. But I really believe that there's people in the positions that could probably easily do the job that a Peewee has become accustomed to over the last year or so. Seva Reese and George Bridge were outstanding uh, in uh, the Bledisloe Cup in Auckland at Eden Park. Uh, Rico Ioane, he's been one of the All Blacks best in, in recent years. He's scored more tries in test matches uh, than test matches he's played. So he's not a bad player and, and I, don't, I don't think they'll leave him out. But they've now created a huge amount of depth and I, I, I think they've created a problem for themselves by giving Reese and George Bridge an opportunity because they've still got to fit in Ben Smith and Geordie Barrett and Bowden Barrett in that back three mix. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who uh, misses out and whoever misses out would have to be considered to be terribly unlucky.